All right, if you have 5G home internet or perhaps you're looking to get it, there is some big news for all of the major carriers in the US. And I'm gonna combine that all together here in this one video. And this is for AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile. There are some really big announcements here. Some of them are not publicly announced, but we have the inside scoop online about uh, what's gonna happen here. So I wanna go over each of those here together in a combined video. Now, if you have not watched my channel, I am Nate, and this is the Nate or Tater channel. And I cover all kinds of topics uh, from smart home, DIY, um, and networking. And one of my biggest ones is actually 5G home internet. So I'm gonna go into details here of each of these. Now I have right here a Verizon home internet gateway and I have a T-Mobile one and I actually have AT&T order. Now AT&T, the announcement there for that one is they have expanded their availability of their AT&T internet air. And that is their competing uh, service for these two. So we'll, we'll go a little bit into details of that gateway. It is very different than these offerings. We'll talk about that. In T-Mobile, there is uh, rumors it's actually kind of confirmed now that there is a new gateway out there and I'm trying to get my hands on it and it has a really big feature that a lot of people want so we'll go into details on that one and then on the Verizon side they also have a brand new gateway that they have publicly announced and in fact there's details on that one as well so let's dive into kind of these details I'll show you them and then of course because my channel is so dedicated to this space I will make sure I get those in my hands and I'll also show them to you. All right, so let's start off with the Verizon service. So there are cubes, there's actually two different cubes. They look exactly the same on the outside, uh, but one is a ASCII brand and one is the Arcadian brand. And there are some differences in there, but those have been their staples uh, since they really came out with the 5G service. And now they have announced a new one. And now there's also a, another one that's been out there. It's their outdoor receiver unit. Um, that one it looks like it's starting to become more available across the board, but this one is their main gateway that they're going to use for people that sign up for their home internet. So this one is the WNC-CR200A. And for this one, they actually have it on their website in their support pages. You can actually get their information, including things like their user guide. Uh, so if we just look at the picture of it, it looks like a... A taller version of their cube so it's more rectangular prism shape and then it does have a couple of nice features I can see right away on it and that is a signal indicator for both cellular and Wi-Fi uh, so that's really great uh, that they have that uh, built in if we go into their actual user guide we can get some more information in there and then kind of the key high level things for this one is that it um, is able to do uh, Wi-Fi 6E, which is a really good Wi-Fi, um, you know, protocol for inside your house. It's very fast. It's one of the latest. Wi-Fi 7 is kind of out there, but 6E gives you a lot of the benefits of the uh, Wi-Fi 7. All right, so here it is. This is the user manual, and we can go through here, and we can see all of the content. This is 166 pages, I think, so I'm not going to go through that by any means in this video. Um, just give you a little high level of what they have in here for the user guide and then if you have a specific question perhaps you might actually have to go into this I'll put links down in the video description uh, below this video inside YouTube so you can click on those and actually go to them and look at them yourself as well if you wanted to but we can see here what's in the box it's basically just the gateway a little uh, quick start guide and the power cord as you would kind of expect but one of the key things I kind of look at when I look through these is does it have a physical SIM or an eSIM or electronic SIM? And that's important to me for a few reasons. I won't quite get into too much details in this video for that. But this one does have a physical SIM card. So that's a really great thing uh, for me and for the potential to use um, that SIM in um, some other capabilities as well. So if we look at the LEDs here. Um, there is a little small light that is above the cellular one, and that just tells you the kind of the, they call it a, um, a boot up light, I guess. Um, but it, it is basically just giving indicators of is the gateway on, is it um, connected, that kind of stuff. And that's basically what this one has in the top left corner, I think, is a little white light, or sometimes it can be yellow or red, depending on the state. Um, but then this one also has 
the um, cellular uh, 5G and, and LTE. And it's only three bars, so you either get, are you a uh, poor, weak signal, a good signal, or excellent uh, signal. And then the Wi-Fi one is just telling you if it is active and on and if it's actually working. Um, and that's the good indicator there of how that's acting. All right, and then it also has Ethernet mode LED, so that's telling you if it's um, actually working and connected. And then uh, the rest of the stuff is really kind of the setup configuration. And when I, I skim through it, I, ha I don't have this device yet myself, um, so I haven't really messed with it, nor have I gone through the whole um, uh, PDF here in detail. But when I skim through it, it looked very similar to the current gateways in that it actually has a lot of good settings. Now, I don't have a lot of complaints actually with the Verizon one and how many settings they typically allow. They do uh, IP pass through and um, DMZ as another alternative. They do give you ability to do port forwarding natively inside of it, um, as well as check out a lot of different things, something that T-Mobile has been lacking on in the past. So I see this gateway as actually a big improvement in uh, Verizon service, and I think it's going to pan out well for them. So. Uh, I look forward to getting this gateway and testing it out. All right, let's move on over to T-Mobile and their new gateway that is released in the FCC document. So FCC uh, obviously controls a lot of the airways and the frequencies of signals that are out there. And there was an embargo on this information, but they test all of the devices in the U.S. that come on our network. So now it is public information. No one can hide it from us. So even though T-Mobile hasn't officially announced this, uh, we can go ahead and, and get these details out there. And I, I do want to uh, thank T-Mobile Report really for helping stay up on top of this stuff and posting it online. That really helps um, myself and others um, get the inside scoop and know when to go check out the FCC uh, documents out there. So this gateway replaces the, this one's a KDN KVD21. There's also a Sagemcom, one that looks very similar but a little bit taller. And then there's a gray cylinder, the Nokia uh, fast model unit as well. So, but this new one is a white square shape and it's kind of skinny and it has a bracket that can either be used for standing it upright or it actually has kind of like a windowsill type um, designed to it. So we'll kind of go into a little bit of details here of what this one looks like and the key thing to it if I scroll down here and get to the back side is shockingly it actually has external antenna ports built right in. These are SMA connectors which is exactly what I need for a waveform antenna to connect to it or a lot of the other aftermarket antennas out there. Um, so that is a astonishing um, news for T-Mobile is that they're actually going to have a factory free gateway that will accept an external antenna and what's even really cool about it is that it actually comes with an external antenna now it's not clear here yet if you have to pay for that extra but if I keep scrolling down here and there's a little close-up there of the antenna one two three four you can also see a um, little silicone flap there that says sim card so it has a physical sim behind that it has two LAN ports on it and then it has a, a power and a USB um, port um, beside it. So that's really cool and then we keep scrolling down here this is where I get to this external antenna. So they have this little looks like a window mount unit and it has four cables so it's a 4x4 four four, but it looks awfully small um, so I don't know how well it's going to do. The cables are awfully small as well so it's certainly not as big of a setup as like the waveform uh, setup that's out there but I'm sure if you are in a like a Faraday cage where you have metal roof or metal siding um, getting it outside of your house would be a big change and big improvement so that's really cool about this gateway from T-Mobile and again I will make sure I try to get my hands on this as soon as I can and I've already made some attempts on myself uh, struck out so far which is pretty typical for um, trying to get these gateways early it's very hard to actually pick them but now we have to move on to AT&T. Now AT&T, they've dabbled in the cellular fixed wireless internet for a while. And in fact, my parents had it for probably a decade now in a, a rural part of Georgia. And that is their only internet service that they really have at that house. And they've been using AT&T to get um, that to work. They have cameras, all kinds of stuff working. And so it does work. 
but it has not been widespread rollout and I've been trying to get it for actually uh, a couple years here now and they have not offered it but they just now uh, this year really started this AT&T Internet Air service and that's something that they rolled out earlier only for folks that were on their copper based DSL so they're trying to get rid of those copper lines and they're trying to convince those customers to switch over to their internet air service I could not get it then but just this week they really opened it up to more areas and that includes me here and I was able to sign up for it so I should get that gateway in the next day or two to review it but if we go in here to the pictures of it it is kind of a unique gateway because it's very different than these other ones which are I don't know you call them very industrial or um, function over form type thing um, this one I don't even know how to pronounce it but I'm just going to use the AT&T uh, I'm going to call it a consumer gateway is what CGW means for I'm not sure of that and then the 450 so um, I'm going to call it the uh, the 450 here and what's cool about it is it has a clock built in it looks like kind of like a football I guess in some ways and um, it it's more pleasing to the eye for sure and um, this is their uh, foray into this space now what it comes with again is very similar to kind of the other ones it's not much it's the gateway it's a power adapter and then you get a little box with some mounting screws and stuff and this one again is kind of designed that it can go in a window if I keep going down here there's some pictures of it kind of um, uh, hanging on a wall uh, which it does have a bracket for that or um, also a, a picture of it on a windowsill with this kind of ugly uh, bracket um, there that it does that stuff for so if I go up to some of the uh, the settings here you can see that it does have a lot of details um, on this page of um, kind of the specs of it you can see it does have three of the yellow Ethernet ports and what's really cool about them is that they're 2.5 gigabits per second which is really uh, impressive a lot of these other ones are um, a thousand or one um, gigabit per second um, it does have a uh, power port, USB port, but it also has a 10 gigabit per second port, which is the blue one, which is really cool. And then it has, um, I think that's called a console port, the red one, the ONT port. And it also has a built-in WPS button. That's something that um, at least the T-Mobile ones have lacked. I think the Verizon ones have had that um, button, which makes it easy to pair uh, some of your devices, especially ones like printers or whatnot that typically don't have a good interface so what you see you're missing on this AT&T one compared to the new uh, T-Mobile one is that it does have no external antenna ports but if we actually go into the breakdown images it does have um, U.FL connectors on the board that are reasonably easy to get to and so that is something that I will be doing here shortly to see if I can get to uh, some pictures here all right, and again, I'll put links in the video description here on YouTube, but here is a PDF that has some of the kind of detailed specs of this AT&T gateway with it torn apart. And so you can see lots of different Wi-Fi antennas out there. I think it's a total of nine of them. Uh, but then also if we scroll down and keep going here, we can see um, some cellular ones as well. So uh, if we go down here, I guess it's towards the bottom. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi. They go into the details of the MIMO, the angles that they're oriented, all that kind of stuff that really most people don't care about. But here is a very important part, and that is what their, um, it looks like eight different antennas for cellular. It's go from zero to seven. All right, and so some of these are four by four capable. Some are uh, kind of dual band or single band capable. And they do have different focuses as far as which bands they are set up for to work with and that means that when we hook up a 4x4 antenna to them we do actually have to pay attention to which ones to hook up to so that's something that um, I have been talking uh, to others about of figuring out how do we make sure we have this set up correctly and then of course I will always do the testing and report out what I find here but this one looks I guess it's good and bad uh, meaning that it can take an external antenna which is a good news the bad news is you do have to disassemble it a little bit just like you have to do with these two to actually get it to hook up but um, that is promising and I'm very interested to see how the AT&T service works out you know they do kind of promise lower speeds especially than the Verizon one 
And I think they kind of promise um, or tell you to expect um, less than 140 megabits per second. So we'll test it out and we'll find out. So hopefully this was informational for you guys. Um, again, lots of news. I'm kind of just trying to throw it together here in one video. But uh, still stay tuned for more details. I'm going to get more of these products. I'm going to test them out. If you have questions, put them down below. If you have suggestions or you have an inside line or something, please do let me know. Um, th that is really how this channel is sustained and um, keeps being innovative. So I do appreciate the comments, the emails of, hey, have you seen this? Have you seen that? Uh, hopefully I already have seen it, but if not, I learned a little bit. So thanks and take care.